Hello, this is a middle school math instructional video for the following worksheet. Operations with fractions, lesson two. Adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. Let's begin. We can only add and subtract fractions with like denominators. In all of the questions today, we have denominators that are unlike. They are not common. They are not the same. And so we need to start off by finding a common denominator. Here's how we do it. As always, we're working down the page. And so we put an equal sign right here. And then we rewrite our question with no numbers. And then step number one is let's just figure out the common denominators. Here's how you do it. You take your denominators and you multiply them together. 3 times 4 is 12. If there are no common factors between your two denominators, you are done. You have the lowest common denominator. In this case, it's 12. And so now what we want to do is write in a denominator of 12 for each of these two fractions. In previous lessons, we covered equivalent fractions. And so that's what we're doing now. You can see the first position in this question used to be the fraction 2 over 3 and now it's something over 12, and so these two fractions are equivalent. Compare your denominators, you're going from a three to a 12, and so we know we're timesing by four, multiply two times four to get eight. Do the same thing here, compare denominators, you're going from a four to a 12, so you're timesing by three, multiply three times three to get nine. Now we have common denominators, just a reminder, we never add or subtract these denominators. So we should start off just by writing it in. And then add up your numerators. 8 plus 9 is 17. This is an improper fraction, so we need one more step to change it to a proper mixed number. And again, we've covered this in previous lessons. And so if you're struggling there, go uh, practice some of those previous lessons that we've done. And so we go to 1 and 5 over 12. This is our final answer. We are done because we are proper and lowest terms. Let's take a look at example number 2. We have unlike denominators. So that's our first priority is to find a common denominator. And so we're going to rewrite our question with no numerators and no denominators. And we're just going to figure out what's our lowest common denominator. So here's what we do. We take our two denominators right now, and we know we want to multiply them together. However, if you have a common factor between these two, you want to factor it out. So the common factor between 6 and 8 is 2. And so there's two ways you can do this. You can go 6 times 8 is 48 divided by 2 to get 24. I like to divide first, and so you take either of these two numbers and factor out a 2. So it can look like this. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. And so now when you do your multiplication, it's a little bit easier, smaller numbers. 6 times 4 is 24, because 24 divided by 1 is just 24. So there you go. We have our LCD, lowest common denominator, of 24. So we can write that in for both of these fractions. And then we want to find out what is the numerator to make these fractions equivalent. First fraction used to be a 6 in the denominator. Now it's 24. We're timesing by 4. 5 times 4 is 20. Fraction number 2, we used to have an 8. It's now 24, so we're timesing by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. OK, now we have a common denominator. So we can write that in. Again, we never add those only add the numerators, 20 plus 9 is 29. We are not done because this is improper. So one more step to go, and we change this to a proper mixed number, 1 and 5 over 24. All right, so let's take a look at some subtracting questions. These have unlike denominators, so step number 1 is we want to find the lowest common denominator. So we rewrite the question. We have no numbers. Let's take a look at this strategy here. We're going to multiply 5 and 10, but we're going to divide out any common factors. Both 5 and 10 can be divided by 5. And so look what happens here. 
The fives just cancel each other out. Five divided by five is one, and so we're left with 10. So the LCD here is 10. We can start off by writing that in. Now we want to make equivalent fractions. So in the first fraction, we used to have a five, it's now a 10. We are timesing by two, so multiply four times two to get eight. Now this fraction doesn't even change, and so we can just write in our numerator of three. Okay, good, we have common denominators, and so we can do our subtraction now. Eight minus three is five. All right, so there we go, but remember, before you move on, always ask yourself, is this proper? Yes. Is this lowest terms? No. So we have one more step to go. We wanna change this to lowest terms before we move on, and now we are done. It is proper, it is lowest terms. All right, let's take a look at this example. Again, unlike denominators, and so step number one is let's figure out the lowest common denominator. We're gonna take those two denominators and we wanna multiply them together. But before we do that, let's factor out the greatest common factor. Both 10 and eight have a greatest common factor of two. And so let's factor that two out of a couple numbers here. So eight divided by two is four, and two divided by two is one. So we're left with 10 times four is 40. Okay, so let's write in our denominator of 40, and then come back and make equivalent fractions by comparing your denominators. 10 to 40 is times by four, so seven times four is 28. Eight times five is 40, so we're gonna go five times five to get 25. All right, so now that we have the common denominator, we can just do our subtraction in the numerator. 28 minus 25 is three. And at this point, we are done. We have a proper fraction and its lowest terms. So let's take a look at what your worksheet looks like and where you're going to be showing your work, and we're gonna practice some more examples with some tough denominators. All right, in question number one, we have the denominators of four and five. Now, hopefully, as soon as you look at these two numbers, you recognize there are no common factors between four and five, and so if we wanted to show work for our denominators, we could do it right here. Four times five is just 20. All right, so I'm gonna write that in now and then come back and make equivalent fractions. Fraction number one went from four to 20. We're timesing by five. Three times five is 15. Fraction number two, we went from five to 20, so we're timesing by four. Four times four is 16. Okay, good, we have a common denominator, so we can just add up the numerators now. 15 add 16 is 31. All right, so we are in lowest terms, but we're not proper, so we're going to change this to one and 11 over 20. Now we are both proper and lowest terms. We are good to go. All right, question number two, three quarters minus one over six. So we have a subtracting question here. Let's take our two denominators and multiply them together, but divide out a common factor of two. And so six and two, they can both be divided by two. And so I'm just gonna make this a little bit easier to do. There we go. Four times three is 12. So that's the LCD right there, 12. All right, now let's make equivalent fractions. Fraction one went from four to a 12. So we're timesing by three. Three times three is nine. Here we're going from six to a 12, so we're doubling, one times two is two. All right, good job. So now that we have that common denominator, we'll write that in so we don't accidentally subtract those. Only the numerator, nine minus two is seven. All right, moving on, number three. We have a six and a nine in the denominator. All right, so we're gonna do six multiplied by nine but we divide out that common factor of three. Okay, so you know nine and three, they can both be divided by three. That's three here and one there, so that's good. Uh, six times three is 18, that is the LCD. So let's start off by writing in 18 for each of these two fractions. Now let's figure out the numerator. 
Always compare. We're going from 6 to 18. That's timesing by 3, so multiply 3 times 3 to get 9. When we go from 9 to 18, we're timesing by 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Okay, we have a common denominator, so we can add the numerators. 9 plus 10 is 19. We are lowest terms, but we are not proper mixed. One more step to go. That is 1 and 1 over 18. Now we are done. Number 4. These are tough denominators when you have 8 and 12. Uh, so let's take a look here at what's going on. We know we want to multiply them together, but we want to divide out the greatest common factor, which is not 2. The greatest common factor is 4. And so we're, gonna, we're going to factor that out. So you don't take both numbers and factor just 1. This time I'm going to take the 8 here and factor out a 4. So that would be 2 factor out of 4, and that's 1. Okay, so now we multiply what's left. 2 times 12 is 24, so that's our LCD. Let's write that in, and then come back and figure out the numerators. We go from 8 to 24, we're timesing by 3. 7 times 3, 21. When we go from 12 to 24, we're timesing by 2, so 3 times 2 gives us 6. Okay, so now we have that common denominator of 24. So we can write that in and just subtract our numerators. 21 minus 6 is 15. All right, so we're proper, but take a careful look. We are not in lowest terms. Both of these numbers can be divided by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5, and 24 divided by 3 is 8. There we go. We are now in lowest terms. All right, so now it is your turn. You are going to complete the worksheet. If you need any help, watch parts of this video again, and when you are done, you can see your teacher for the answer key. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can reach us at springhouseeducation at outlook.com.